Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. And on the 67th anniversary of the dedication of St. Margaret's Episcopal Church, we pray, Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the dedication of this house of prayer, we give you thanks for the fellowship of those who have worshipped in this place, and we pray that all who seek you here may find you and be filled with your joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him, worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, 
and thirst no more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and verse 22 in unison. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the first letter of John. See what the great love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, we are now children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in spirit, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for those who have gone before, those who will come after, and those that are in the here and now. Thank you for the particularity of all of our gifts and fill us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, happy All Saints Sunday. Today is an important day of the church year. In the Anglican tradition, it is the day where we smush together three different commemorations. All Hallows Eve, a.k.a. Halloween, which we celebrated yesterday. All Saints Day, November 1st, which is today. And All Souls Day, which is tomorrow, November 2nd. And in that smushing together of, of those three commemorations, we reflect on the faithful departed, those loved ones we've lost in the last year, as well as the saints who have gone before. It's also a day where we simply remember all the dead as a way of reminding us of how precious life is and as a reminder that when we pass through the veil of death, life is not ended, it's just different, changed. This All Saints Sunday has particular meaning because we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and we, know, we all know someone who has either had the virus or, God forbid, we may all know someone who has died from it. For me, this day makes me think about the particularity of life. The word all in all saints stood out to me this year. All can signify a generality whereby the individual can just get lost. Today we will remember all who have died. We lift up the understanding that it's not just saints like Peter, Paul, Mary, Margaret who are saints, but that we are all saints when we are faithful to God. We say quite often that all are welcome here at St. Margaret's. And while the generality of all is important, that inclusiveness of pertaining to many people, Jesus today points to something else in our gospel lesson. Jesus points out the particularity of all without actually using that word. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, and so on, and so on, and so on. These beatitudes reveal a universality that is inclusive of a wide humanity. But it is also particular in its focus. 
Jesus reminds his first hearers and us today that blessedness doesn't come from perfection of faith or piety. Instead, what makes us blessed is our particularity of the human condition. The times when we are poor in spirit. The times when we mourn. The times when we are meek. The times when we hunger and thirst for righteousness. When we're merciful. When we're pure in heart. When we're striving for peace. When we're persecuted or reviled for following Jesus' way. In other words, what makes us all saints is not when we're grouped into an amorphous category. But when our personal and particular struggles form us into the people that we are. So you are a saint, not because of the victories you've achieved as a Christian, but because of your specific individual journey with God. And with all the bumps and bruises that you've endured as a result. All is not so much an identifier of the whole, but the particularity of the individual saint. It is meet and right so to point out those identifiers in the way that Jesus does. Blessed are you because of your specific trial. Think about the saints that have gone before whether they were biblical or historical or familial. The beauty is that none of them were perfect, even though we want to remember them as such. Death creates this veil of amnesia around the truth of who a person really was. Have you ever been to a funeral where the person was revered, even though you knew that they were anything but in their life. See, at my funeral, instead of idealizing who I was, I'd rather have people point out the ways that I stumbled, staggered, doubted, argued, and screwed up. Yet Jesus loved me anyway and called me blessed. It's in each of our unique and perfectly imperfect practice of following Jesus that we are made all saints. As John in his first letter says, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. All of us are God's children yet in very particular and unique ways. When we point out those particularities that make us uniquely children of God, it's not to diminish the whole of God's children, but to lift up and celebrate God who works in the individual. That God cares about those particularities. Whether we've prayed or not, that prayer where we say to God, God, I know that you have a lot and my request is not very important. When we pray that, I think God looks at us with loving eyes and reminds us that every need that we have, every problem, every trial, every struggle, every flaw, is important to him. So on this All Saints, as we gather and celebrate this holy time together, this holy day once more, a reminder that you are all still welcome here, whether it's virtually or in person. You are welcome here. Because of the particularity that God created in you. Not because you're perfect, but because you are uniquely 
loved exactly as you are. There's a wonderful Celtic invitation to Holy Eucharist that I have heard several of my colleagues use. Much like Jesus in the Beatitudes, it highlights both the inclusivity of all and the uniqueness of all. This is the table, not of the church, but of God. It is to be made ready for those who love God and who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, not because I invite. It is God who invites. And it is God's will that you who want God should meet God here. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6, can be found on page number 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, Don, and Paul, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, 
the clergy and people of All Saints Atlanta, All Saints Warner Robins, and for all congregations seeking new or renewed direction, the bishop and people of our companion and partner diocese of Cape Coast, Ghana, and our sister parish, St. Teresa of Avila, Cape Coast. For Keith, Phyllis, Randy, Anne, Judy Baumgardner, John, Cece, Pat, Mitch, Kathy, Ralph, Francis, Jay, Meredith, Patrick, Brenda, Marcia, Carolyn, Debbie, Peggy, Jeff, Judith, Fran, Judy. And for our seminarian and his wife, Andrew and Julie Gordon, and for all who serve in the military, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever. Today we also give thanks for the birth of Jim and Michelle Patrick's new baby boy. And on this All Saints Day, we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Collins Edge Jackson, Bill Hooper, David Richwine, Nancy Zizzo, Jackie Sapira, Matt Willia, Christy Chatwick, Tommy Greer, Tommy Allen, Tommy Thurman, Glenn Peacock, Jim Bobick, Wanda Cleghorn, Leonor Jimenez, David Denman, Robert Nelson, Bill Horton, Bernice Norton, Bernadette Henry Carr, Tina Anderson, Scott May, Roy Brazil, Joe Robinson, Randy Foster, Josephine Pace, Kirsten Nicole Hare, Sean Connery. For the 50 million people who have died from disease, nat natural disasters, natural causes or unnatural causes, for the more than 225,000 people in the United States, including 75 in Carroll County who have died as a result of COVID-19, and for the over 1,700 U.S. healthcare workers who have died on the front line, for the 47,000 people in the U.S. who have died by suicide this year, for the law enforcement officers who have died in the line of duty in the U.S. for those who have died at the hands of law enforcement officers, for those who have died as a result of war and social conflict including soldiers and innocent bystanders, for those who have died as a result of capital punishment, for those who have died accidentally by their own hand or someone else's for the most vulnerable, including children and the elderly, who have died because of neglect or abuse. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We also pray this week for our national election. 
Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We also pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Uh, sending you our love wherever you may be. Uh, please be seated. I uh, want to point out a, a number of things that are going on today uh, and upcoming. Uh, first of all, you may join the adult Bible study, which will meet via Zoom at 1030 this morning. If you need that Zoom link, contact George Linnaeus, um, and he will make sure that you get on that call. Also today, our Rite 13 class is meeting at 11.30 via Zoom. Um, today for our Sunday school is our monthly Sunday school home scavenger hunt. So uh, we encourage all of our families to uh, use the things that are in their Sunday school box and to do that, um, that Sunday school scavenger hunt today. It's a great way to celebrate. Um, today also is an exciting day because it is the first time that we will have an in-person service of Holy Eucharist at 1 p.m. Uh, that one is at capacity. We filled up all of the spots for that. So um, uh, those of you who uh, weren't able to sign up, um, uh, I encourage you to sign up for November 15th, which is St. Margaret's Day. And um, I am pretty sure we're going to have to have more than one service for that. So uh, more uh, more information about that will be forthcoming, but um, uh, if you have not signed up, um, we need you to do that, and so please do that as soon as possible. You can email Julie or call the church office and leave a message, and uh, we will get you on the list for November 15th. Today, also, Junior EYC is going to meet at 3 p.m., and um, our J2A Senior EYC will meet at 6 p.m. this evening as well. This coming Wednesday is the, the third part of our uh, Wednesday evening uh, adult formation class on African saints of the Bible. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Queen of Sheba. And so I encourage you, we've had some great conversations, uh, so all are welcome to join us for that. that. That class takes place via Zoom, but we stream it on the Facebook page. So if you'd like to participate in the conversation, uh, we, we, just let me know and I'll get you to the list where we can get you on the Zoom call as well. Also, um, the Brotherhood of St. Andrew is scheduled to meet this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, so more information will be sent out in the newsletter about that. Um, also, I want to just uh, 
tell you, um, uh, our altar flowers today are given by our ECW, and, uh, and it is given in remembrance of those who have died in the last year, so we thank our ECW. And uh, stay tuned, uh, some, some, some news uh, about the, the ECW uh, starting to meet up again in the coming weeks, so uh, please be sure to look at the newsletter and any other uh, uh, reports about the ECW that will be meeting via Zoom uh, in the next couple of months. So we're grateful for them. Also, I just want to continue to thank you all, those of you who have continually been supporting St. Margaret's financially. If you would like to give, please do via our online giving. Uh, you can go to stmargaretsga.com slash donations, and there is uh, many several ways that you can you can give uh, either virtually through uh, online giving or if you'd like to send in a check, uh, that is great too. So we are just so grateful for those of you who have been so uh, generous and sustaining of the ministries of St. Margaret's uh, over the last uh, number of months. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, today we have a number of birthdays that we want to recognize. Andrew Gordon, Lily Kate Hitzman, Lauren Weber, Ty Jackson, hi Ty, Mary Hart, Alexis Graff, Pat Gibbons, Ralph Fleck, Fran Chalfont, William Mazel, Carolyn Carey, Swede Sullivan, and Martha Minor. Let us pray for these wonderful individuals. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, in your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for our anniversaries, we want to recognize Alex and Susan Rausch. And Randy and Lizanne Denman, who are celebrating anniversaries this week. Grant, O oh God, in your compassion that these couples, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing, whoa, 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 and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you and will remain with you always. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with blessed Margaret and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though the people of St. Margaret's cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. My friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us and will remain with us always.
Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the Revelation to John. Amen. 